Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. The City of Boston Zoning Board of Appeal hearing for August 18th, 2022 is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature last year. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings until March, 2023. This hearing of the subcommittee is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This hearing is also being recorded. In order to ensure that this hearing of the subcommittee is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. Board members, applicants, and their attorneys or representatives will participate in the hearing as panelists, and they will appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly encouraged to keep the video on while presenting to the board. As with our in-person meetings, comments and support will be followed by comments and opposition. The order of comments is as follows, elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The chair may limit the number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project. That is, those individuals who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar platform. Click it again and your hand should go down. When the host sees your hand, you will receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand. You must press star six to unmute yourself after you receive the request from the host. Again, if you are connected by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand and star six to unmute yourself. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first, and then, and then can provide their comment. In the interest of time, and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Fortune reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant is, address is called, or the meeting hosts will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. Um, Mr. Fortune? Good evening, Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Better Barraza? Good evening, Madam Chair. Good evening. Um, Mr. Fortune, it's all yours. Thank you, Madam Chair. The first order of business is, are any deferrals or withdrawals to those five o'clock cases? If you can give me the address first, if you are deferring or withdrawing. Hearing none, I'll call the first case. Calling DOA 565-482-26 Union Avenue. This is to install a curb cut and driveway for two parking spaces. The violations, Article 10, Section 1, limitation of area of accessory uses. Article 55, Section 40, Austria parking and loading, design and maneuverability. And Article 55, Section 9, usable open space is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Sorry, one second. There is a raised hand here. Let me just get to it. Um, 
Oh, the Jake Lisi, I see that's you. Let me make you a panelist. Um, uh, my name is Fred Vetterline. I live at 2628 Union Avenue. So please, um, first of all, tell us is this, um, so it looks like these are two, two wood story frame buildings. Um, is this, and which, which uh, building is the parking connected to and is it owner occupied? Um, can I just start an introduction quickly? No, I just want to know those questions, yeah. uh, responses to those questions now. I live in the first house, which is number 26, and the back house is my tenant. And the intention is that each house would have a parking spot. Okay. Um, I understand that this particular project and this particular request came to this board before. So please tell us uh, what the previous proposal was um, and what this proposal is. Uh, actually, it didn't come to the board before. It was, um, I filed the appeal, uh, I think it was 2014. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to the neighborhood and I didn't have, I didn't really have the support. So I, I, I didn't follow through. So I've never been to the board for this. Okay, because, um, okay, so go ahead and tell us what you're proposing to do. Okay, so um, I just want to say I'm a 41 year resident of Jamaica Plain, and this is the 10th year I've had this property. Okay, uh, just tell yeah. us about about the facts of the proposal. We have other 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 uh, applicants uh, behind you, so we would like you to be very precise about about your proposal. Uh, I have. Do you mean the other property? My property? Are you asking about my property? Yes, the yes. proposal that's in front of us. Please talk us through that. Okay, so I have the uh, uh, the first house. It's a single family. The house behind me is a single family. I have a couple living there who are my tenants. Um, so the, uh, and I guess I basically want to say the driveway, I pushed it back here to get it away from the street rather than being in the front of the house. And I also have an egress along the side of the house. You see on the right side, that's a three foot egress that goes all the way to the street. So that's uh, for safety. Okay, so you're proposing, is there, so tell us about um, uh, what is the street um, where the wide driveway is proposed or the second the second dwelling is? is? What uh, is that street? This, uh, the, the top of the drawing shows Union Street. Okay. And, and the top of the drawing is Union Street. So the driveway starts there and you can see the 10 foot width of the curb cut. And then uh, the driveway goes back. It's a 10 foot width along the side of the house back to the parking spaces that are labeled parking spaces. Okay, so tell me, is there parking on that side of the street on Union Street? Yes, there is. There's not on the opposite side, but there is on this side. But uh, I'd give up one parking space, but gain two, the street would lose two cars because it's a tandem parking situation. Okay, um, let's see. How are the plans, Ms. Beta Barraza? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. M Madam Chair, uh, Mr. D'Amico has spoken on this. I don't know if Mr. D'Amico is on. Um, it doesn't look like he's on. Well, I'd like to put his comments in for the record. Okay. Regarding 26 Union Avenue, he says it's okay. Uh, he believes that the curb cut should be reduced to 12 feet. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition to this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the board. Some background information on the community process. Our office held in the Butters meeting on March 17th. It was heavily attended by residents and Director Butters on Union Ave. Uh, while there was a lot of support from what is essentially a curb cut application, there were some concerns raised by two direct abutters regarding emergency egress and parking, as apparently it's very scarce in that part of the neighborhood. Uh, the Jamaica Plain, uh, the JPNC Zoning Subcommittee voted not to oppose this proposal. At this time, we defer to the board. Thank you. 
Madam Chair, Secretary here. We do have letters of support and opposition as the mayor's office spoke of. And Madam Chair, I do have a few raised hands here. I'll start with Tess. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? So I'm Tess Lesniak. Can you not hear me? Yes, go ahead. Oh, uh, I'm at 30 Union Ave. Um, so we are a direct abutter. We spoke in favor. I just, sorry, the person who spoke before when he said there were two direct butters who opposed, I think that's inaccurate so because there's only uh, one. Since, since you have the floor, please tell us about your support or opposition so that we can then hear from other people. Okay, so we're in support of it. I mean, we have a similar driveway. Um, we're able to shovel, shovel snow. People are able to walk to our house Thank between you. the car and the fence. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, Alex? Can you say your name? Uh, Madam Chair, I have uh, someone next to me, a neighbor who'd like to speak. Alex, you're unmuted. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? If you're looking hi, my name is, hi, my name is Alex Grudyoff. I'm a direct abutter to uh, Fred's property. The address is 30 Union Ave. On the plans, I am the house uh, behind Marie Turley's house. I am in support of Fred's proposal. He's been a good neighbor, takes care of his property. I think, Matt, we add one more parking spot on the street. And I am familiar with a number of neighbors on the street that have similar parking arrangements and have no problem with uh, managing those arrangements. Thank you. Okay, and Tess, can you state your name and address for the record, please? I already went. Oh, okay. Uh, I think I uh, have no additional raised hands. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, can you hear me? Yes, please uh, go ahead. I have a neighbor here. Um, he'd like to speak. Uh, his name is Andrew Lynch. He lives on Union Ave. Madam Chair, thank you very much. My name is Andrew Lynch. I'm from 64 Union Avenue in Jamaica Plain, and I'd like to add my support for Mr. Betterline's request for off-street parking and a curb cut. I mean, it's a simple case of math. He takes away one spot on the street and adds, takes two cars off the street. So okay. we're netting. Thank you. you have an thank you. And I'm sorry, I'm Marie Charlie. Go ahead. Marie? Can you hear me? Go ahead, yep. Hi, my name is Marie Turley. I live at 32 Union Avenue. I am a direct abutter. And again, this is not about um, any of our service or residency in the neighborhood. It's about the proposal. With all due respect, Connor, um, there was not a vote of support uh, at the JP Neighborhood Council, it was heard twice. And at no time was there a vote to support the proposal. Um, what we're really here about today is a, a, a significant documentation that has been provided to the board in anticipation of this hearing. What is unique about this is that it's a double pork chop lot. So I'm on one pork chop and Mr. Vetterlein is on the other. This is an extremely a dense location. Oh, hold on, hold, hold, hold on, Miss Tully. What do you mean by two pork chop lots? Both these, both these buildings, from what I can gather, that that are subject to this uh, this parking request are on the same lot. But the lots that abut it uh -huh. are also pork chops. So you have four houses in close proximity. Okay. Extremely close. I provided a, um, a slide to show that uh, with my letter in opposition. And um, I, because we don't have access to the screen, I can't show it to you. But literally, you can reach out from 28 uh, and touch 30R. We're extremely close. I would ask you to look at that documentation. Um, I would also like to point out that um, currently, Mr. Betterline does not park on the street, so we're not losing two cars from the street. We're privatizing one spot um, and not taking two cars off the street. He parks in the rear. Um, also, we provided for you documentation that Mr. Vetterline uh, sent at the second JP Neighborhood Council meeting. Uh, and he did, and we appreciate, show both cars parked in the very narrow driveway. Mm -hmm. If you look at those documentation, you can see how very little space there is 
um, between where the cars are and where the wall of the house is. There's a question of uh, entrance according to the BPDA guidelines uh, for how you would enter from Union Avenue to the rear. So in, even though there's 10 feet width, in fact, three of it or so is necessary for the egress. Um, so, I think that- So, so Ms. Sterling, if I may summarize then, your concern is related one to density, two to the number of actual parking spaces that will be um, taken off the street and three, the closeness and the concern about hazard. Is that, is that also your concern? I can just sum it up with access of emergency vehicles, whether it's fire or ambulances with this particular proposed and also the maneuverability because J Union Avenue is a very busy pass through. Oh. The cars, even though they would have each other's keys, every time they needed to maneuver, both cars would have to come out in the street. They're probably going to be idling, uh, similarly with snow removal. Um, so that really this, this um, proposal is going to really impact the street in terms of deliveries, in terms of maneuverability, things that are pointed out within the rejection letter. This has um, come before um, anecdotally on the street. We know that an effort was made by the previous owner to um, do this kind of a, to create a curb cut. And that was denied because of the narrowness and they ended up having to have handicapped parking in the front of the building. And at 26 Union. So it's the maneuverability and its impact on the street. Um, it's the um, access of emergency vehicles, fire, et cetera. And also um, the proximity of the houses just in terms of risk in general. Okay. Um, and Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Anybody else, Ms. Uh, Ambassador? No, Madam Chair, I have no additional. Oh. Okay, given that, given that information. May I answer the? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, okay, given that information in support and in opposition, and and the concerns raised, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with two proviso. One is to narrow the curb cut to twelve feet. And the second one is to have BPDA, BPDA design review to review the direct path of entry from the sidewalk to the building at the rear. I'm gonna agree with that. I'll second that motion. Hmm. Um, I'm actually in opposition to this proposal. Um, so I would suspect um, then it should, it, it should probably go to the full board for discussion. Correct, Madam Chair. Yes, okay. So um, thank you both. Um, so may I have then a motion for a deferral to the full board? I'll, I'll make that motion that we um, change it, we'll defer this to the full board. Uh, we can do it next Tuesday the 23rd. Okay, so it's 8.23. Um, so that'll be at 11.30. Ms. Better. Um, I second that. You second that? I too am in support. Mm -hmm. So we, we will see everybody on uh, 8.23 at 11 o'clock. 11.30, Madam Chair. I'm sorry, 11.30. Calling your next case, calling DOA 1265152. 10 Carson Street. This is the asphalt paved driveway, which can block three vehicles. Paved driveway in front of the house can let outside, let outside car move easier if the inside car needs to come out. This paved driveway is not for parking purposes. The violations Article 65, Section 41, off street parking and loading, and Article 65, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. anybody on for 10 Carson Street? There is a raised hand, one second. Um, Alan B, is that, are you here to, for this project? I sent a request to unmute you. Hello, can you Hi. hear me? Oh yes, go ahead. 
Hi, uh, I'm the owner of Ten Carson Street. So I just want to mention that uh, we changed our uh, proposal to let we decrease the uh, number of parking spaces from three to two. And then we also changed the um, asphalt paving to um, paper stones to um, solve the water flows problem. Okay, so please, before we go any further, um, is this a, a one or two family and is it owner occupied? Um, this is a single family. House. And it's owner occupied? Uh, yes. Okay, so just- Madam Chair, Madam Chair I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Um, but Mr. Mr. D'Amico spoke on this. Yeah. Uh, and he said he doesn't have, the plans that he has should reflect more detail and it only shows one vehicle. Yes, that's what we see on the screen. Um, so please go ahead um, and tell us what you're proposing to do. I'm having a little bit of a hard time um, understanding these plans. So please talk us through it and tell us what you're proposing to do. Um, it seems like this um, plan, it's the old one because I updated um, the new one on the system and sent it to um, an officer um, before. Okay. So, so yeah. Okay, so how about this? Uh, we'll, we'll call you back and in the meantime, uh, they they will look for the um, for the for what you resubmitted. Okay, so okay. if anybody is here for Carson Street, please stay on, um, and then we will return to this project. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, calling the next case. Calling DOA one two nine five five nine eight seven Rock Road. This is to remove an old rear deck and build a bathroom addition and a new rear deck. The violations, Article 69, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. And Article 69, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Oh, looks like I see here. Tadara, for this case. Hi, yes. Um, um, I'm the daughter of the owner and I also reside here. My name is, um, full name is Alex Pierre. Alex Pierre. Okay. So tell us what's being proposed. Uh, so right now we are proposing to uh, redo the back deck. And in addition, uh, um, within that deck, adding a bathroom in there. Uh, so taking away portion of that deck is what that's already existing. So we're not uh, adding any extra footing uh, to the that part of the, uh, the back area of the house we're just uh in, in closing portion of the deck to create a bathroom in there okay uh, and, and this bathroom would be attached to the house i assume yes okay yes. okay and how okay how are the plans miss better sure the, the plans are adequate okay sorry it's okay. <laughs> anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Uh, we're unaware of any concerns with this project. Thank you. Hello? 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 I think Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Can I, can I speak to My yeah. name is Robert Julian. My name is Robert Julian. Hello? Yes. What is your address? My address? Mm -hmm. I'm at 52 with Longwood. My, my, my street is uh, parallel to the and, uh, Alex uh, Pierre house. Okay. Uh, are, yeah, you in I, support, are you in support or in opposition? I'm, I'm a supporter. I, I, I will like uh, the city to approve the project. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm sure I had no additional raised hands. Okay. Um, 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 do we have the BPDA's recommendation on this? I did not see it. I'm assuming not, but yes, um, we do they, have. A, they approved it. Okay. May I have a motion, please? I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. I'll second that motion. I too am in support. So you're all set. Good luck. Thank you. Oops, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Fortune. Aye. Ms. Beda Barraza. Aye. Araujo is also in support. Okay, do we have to go back to those other ones and do those all over? 
Uh, let's um, let's do that at the end, okay? Okay. Uh, Tom says it's fine. Oh, Tom says it's fine. Okay. Calling the next case, calling DOA 1332 200 Turtle Pond Parkway. Reframing of the second floor to extend the second story height and footprint of an existing single family. Scope also includes a new covered entry porch. The violations, Article 69, Section 9, front yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Stephen Petipas. I'm the architect of this project. I live at uh, 7 Stimson Street in West Roxbury. Uh, this is an existing non-conforming house where the front yard is only 20 feet or required to be 25. We are extending that non-conformance to the second floor, adding approximately 315 additional square feet to the second floor, and then putting an attic on top of that, and also extending the existing entryway over the actual landing of the front porch. Okay. Um, can 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 I just see what the, tell us what page we should be looking at to see what um, what this will look like once it's uh, been if you done? Keep, keep, keep scrolling down. You see the existing floor plans. These are the proposed floor plans. And as you keep this is the second floor with the, a section. Scroll down one more time, and you'll see that these are the exterior elevations. Okay, so, okay. Just, um, just, for, cl just for clarification, um, I believe there was an error on the drawing. Um, I think you noted basement plan, but that was supposed oh, to be second floor, is that correct? Yes, that, that is probably probably okay. correct. I do that quite often, actually. Okay, and okay. Um, is this owner occupied? Yes, it is. Okay, and that garage that's there is going to remain, right? Yes, it's existing. Okay. Okay. How are the plants, Ms. Barraza? Madam Chair, other than what I just noted, they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody here to either speak in support or in opposition? Uh, my apologies, Madam Chair. Uh, our liaison is out and I don't have the notes in front of me from the community process. Uh, so with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. If you'd like, I can go over what, what we did. We had a fairly successful uh, butters meeting. I believe only two uh, butters showed up. Both were in favor. And we had a mismatch with the community service. And when we tried to reschedule, they just sent the notice back saying, basically they approved it because it's such a simple project. Okay. Um, Ms. Ambassador, any raised hands? No raised, oh, one just popped up, one second. Okay, um, Zoom user, I'm sending a request to unmute you. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Frederick Cherkovsky and David Moyer. Our address is 204 Turtle Pond Parkway for the neighbors. And are you in support or in opposition? In support. Thank you so much. I have no additional raised hands, Madam Chair. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA Design Review. Okay. I'll second that motion. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So, um, Ms. Uh, Mr. Fortune? Yes. Ms. Better Barraza? Yes. Araujo is also in support, so motion carries. Calling the next case, calling DOA 133 5195 15 Maple Street. This is to replace 77 feet of six foot fence with 77 feet of eight foot fence on the back right of the property from the corner of garage to the corner of the lot. The goal is to reduce, reduce the noise from center street and parking lot on the other side of the fence. The violations article 2A, section 01, yard regulations. Within a required side yard, no planting other than shade trees shall be maintained more than six feet above the average natural grade. Such, such yard and no structure shall be erected in step. Name and address for the record, please. Anybody from Maple Street on? There's a, a hand that just sh showed up. One second. Um, Jasmine? We're here. Oh, sorry, James Sullivan, are you here for this proposal? Yes. Yeah, I'm the uh, contractor, but also uh, owner too. And I'm here with uh, Christine Shelley, who's also the owner. Okay, please put your name and address on the record. Tell us if this is a one family or two family and tell us whether it's owner occupied. 
uh, single family owner occupied. And tell us what you're proposing. Uh, replace an existing wooden six foot fence that's 70 feet, 77 feet long with an eight foot fence. Uh, for We also have a pool in the back too. Um, and the line of sight from Center Street and from the back parking lot of the dental office and a funeral home is pretty clear into the yard. So we wanna just reduce the view. Uh, so no one can really see that there's a pool there. Also sound buffering, uh, privacy on our end. Um, because it is uh, facing a parking lot of a dental office and a funeral home, and we can view Center Street too. Okay, and what kind of fence is this? Uh, existing one is a six foot stockade fence, which I think is pine. Uh, we would be replacing it with an eight foot uh, cedar fence. Okay, um, I'm not going to comment on that pool, but there are regulations about enclosing pools. Um, so no stray people could take a tumble in the pool or hurt themselves in some way. So you may want to make sure that pool also meets all other regulations. Yes. Okay. Uh, how are the plans, Ms. Better Barraza? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Anybody to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Jake Lacey from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant went in front of the West Roxbury Neighborhood Council Zoning Committee on June 21st, 2022, where they received a vote of support five to zero. We have not received any letters of opposition. And at this time, we defer to the decision of the board. Thank you. I'm going to try to have no raised hands at the moment. Okay, um, may I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review to review the length, the design, and the material of the fence, and to also provide a step down uh, near their side, side yard. And that's for visibility? Ms. Better? Yes, because if, if they're just doing the corner, uh -huh. um, closer to their to the front is a residential structure. So we just want to be careful on how that fence side yard is designed. Uh, I, I would also I'll encourage the motion. applicant to look at some planting as well. And we we'll ask the BPDA to recommend planting. OK, um, so um, Fortune. Aye. Better Barraza. Aye. Araujo is also in support. So you're all set with approval with, with those provisos. Uh, so good luck. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling DOA 1337104, 25 Roston Road. This is the second floor dormer addition with half bathroom, second floor insulation and finishes, heat pump insulation and associated appropriate task appropriate. Violation of Article 67, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 67, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. And Article 67, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Um, my name is Frank Dill, 27 Leslie Road, Belmont, and I'm here as an architect representing the property owners. And is this a one family or two family and is it owner occupied? It, it's a one family and it's owner occupied. Okay, so tell us what's being proposed. Well, uh, there's an existing Cape style house and we are proposing a single shed dormer on the rear of the house. Okay. And and so the shed dormer would, and what's the distance between the rear of that building and um, the, the yard? Uh, the, sorry, the rear of the building to the property line is about 38 feet, one inch. Okay. Um, is that what you were asking? Yep. And, this, and the side yard is, what is the, the distance to the uh, side yard? The, the closest point to the existing house is three foot three. Um, the closest point uh, from the property line to the uh, proposed dormer is five foot one. Okay. And we believe the side yard is reduced in this case because of the narrow lot to okay. eight feet. Okay. Um, how are the plans, Ms. Beta Barraza? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Uh, is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Uh, some bad 
background information on the community process, our office held a butters meeting on June 21st. Uh, there were some, some concerns from Director Butters regarding the dormer windows and what they perceived as a, a lack of privacy. Uh, this issue regarding the dormers was discussed privately between the abutters and neighbors. Our office has received 17 letters and statements of support and one letter of opposition regarding this proposal. Thank you. Secretary here, we have those letters of um, support and opposition that the mayor's office told them. Thank you. I do have a few raised hands here. I'll start with Niles. Can you state your name and address for the record, please, once unmuted? A good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Niles Falks of 20 Mount Vernon Road. I am the director butter behind 25 Ralston Road, and I object to the shed dormer being built as proposed, which will face my property. I want to be clear that I have no objection to building a dormer. My objection is where they propose it be built. Including the June 21st meeting, the proponents and I have spoken several times about my concerns regarding their plans, but have been unable to reach agreement on modifications. It is their desire, their wish to create more living space, but that desire I would argue does not uh, create a hardship requiring variance approval as defined in chapter 665. Okay. Okay, so tell us about um, how this will affect you more precisely. Um, I would suggest if the variance is allowed, it will be injurious to my property as defined uh, in chapter 665. Because no, 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 I, wa I want to know is, I, no, I want to know, is it going to cast a shadow on you? I want to know. Uh, oh, okay. It's going to cause. Very specifically. Uh, what you anticipate the impact will be? Um, it's going to cause some more density because of the uh, house and garage already, um, which uh, are on the back side of the house, and my the back of my house faces that. Also, the the creation of the dormer will cause uh, loss of, of the modicum of privacy I now enjoy, and replace that with like a fishbowl environment, which will take away the joy I have of living in the house. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Um, Emily, uh, one second. Uh, can you state your name and address for the record? Hi, my name is Emily Walls. I'm at 17 Roston Road. So I am the direct abutter on the side yard on the Roston Road side. And okay. tell us whether you're in support or in opposition. I am in support. Okay, so then, because your side yard is five feet, one inch. Okay, okay, thank you. Madam Chair, okay. additional raised hands. Okay, um, may I ask of the applicants, have you uh, um, explored the option of having your dormer on the front of the building? Well, I, I can address that. We, we have looked at that option. Um, that I guess is, uh, even less in compliance than the dormer in the back because it would be entirely in the front setback. Um, we're actually equally close to the neighbor across the street as we are to uh, Niles in the rear. Uh, and there's actually no trees uh, blocking that view. Um, the owners found that it would be you know, uh, very public to have the dormer on the front side. Okay. Um, rather than Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair, may, may I say something? Can, can I? Okay, so I'm going to, um, this is a, a board meeting, and I'd just like to move now to a discussion with the board members. Okay, so please, everybody mute yourself. Um, um, is there a BPDA recommendation? Yes. Please help us out, because I honestly didn't see that, but I may have just not. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the recommendation was the recommendation. You're asking if the BPDA made a recommendation? Yeah. They did make a recommendation for approval with special attention to design of dormer. For design of dormer, okay. And as our planning uh, agency, we, we yep. put weight into what they say. So may I have a motion, please? 
Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review, paying special attention to the dormers. Um, I'll second that motion. Do we want any additional screening and buffering? N no, I see this as a very, I, I, Madam Chair, I see a very modest addition and the okay. butters are very far away. Okay, okay, so that's so, uh, Fortune? Aye. Beta Barraza? Aye. Um, Araujo is also in support. So the, the the motion for approval with design review carries. Uh, good luck. Thank you. And, oh, please, okay, and please continue talking with your butter um, so that you know you 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 maintain as cordial a relationship as possible. Thank you. Calling your next case, calling BOA 438 Main Street. This is an addition of a third floor and attic playroom, half a story and we have mudroom addition. The ex existing first floor kitchen will be remodeled. Violations of Article 62, Section 25, new structure restrictions and Article 62, Section 8. The building is excessive in stories. Name and address for the record, please. Hello, my name is Timothy Sheehan. I'm the architect for the project. My clients are, are you know, are the homeowners and it's a single family. Okay, could tell us what's being proposed. What we'd like to do is add a story and a gable and an and, you know, an attic playroom to an existing two and a half story house. Um, this is in a, I don't know, a 30 unit development from the late 80s and the house to our immediate left, number 438 Main Street is already at the three and a half stories. So we just wanna match exactly what's going on next door. And that came before the sport? Uh, probably in 1987, yes. Okay. Um, can you tell us which plan we should look at to see exactly A1. what it might look like? Yeah, go down. I think you, I'm, go down. Uh, I'll go up. I can't see which where it is, but it, there's only three drawings. Thank you. I'll go up. I didn't see it. Let me go up. There it is. That's that's the way it's going to look. I've I've put in gray, hatched gray to show you what will be new. So. The whole project is they have an existing basement now that's exposed at the back. We like to create that, create, turn that into an office storage space, not a bedroom. There's seven foot nine inches of headroom, and it, it, it it's a perfect space for it. Um, we'd like to put a door in an area way to get you up uh, for access to the backyard from that uh, basement level. Uh, the second floor, we would move, uh, change it around just to get stairs up to the new third floor, just matching what you know the floor plan from next door. And then to match next door, we're going to do a gable roof as well. And we'd like to put 200 square feet up there as a playroom or storage. Um, this house now is 936 square feet, and it's a family of five. So they just need okay. the room. Okay. Um, how are the plans, Ms. Barraza? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Uh, some background information on the community process. Uh, our office is unaware of any concerns at this time. Uh, we did share the plans with uh, one abutter upon request, uh, but they did not follow through with our office. With that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, just wanted to let you know that the BPDA also made a recommendation, mm -hmm. and the recommendation was to approve the project with BPDA design review, but to remove the basement conversion of habitable space due to the property being located in a coastal flood resilient overlay district. Okay. okay. So I'm going to put forward um, a very similar motion. Uh, please, so, so go ahead, do, do make a motion. Okay. I'd like to put a motion forward for approval with two proviso. One is BPDA design review, and the second one is to remove the basement conversion of a habitable space due to its proximity, due to its location of a coastal flood resilience overlay district. I'll second that motion. I too am in support. So, um, Fortune? Aye. Be Better Barraza? Aye. Around Joe also in support. So motion with those provisos carries. Good luck. Thank you, everybody. Calling the next case, calling VOA 133 9956 127 Train Street. This is a proposed second floor addition to an existing one story single family and new front porch. 
The violation of Article 65, Section 9, front yard is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. It's Lisa Bartlett, 127 Train Street, and my husband, Robert, is also here. So tell us what you're proposing to do. So we want to do a second floor addition um, and also a new front porch. So the second floor addition will be just be on the existing footprint of the house. And so how, how many square feet is that? Um, do you know the total? I think it'll be an additional thousand square feet. A thousand square feet, and this is owner occupied? Yes. Okay. Um, and has this particular project come before this board in the past? No. No, okay. Okay, so it's proposed entire second floor addition. Okay, so all these uh, violations are existing violations. And tell us about the front porch. Is it gonna be an open or enclosed front porch? Open. Okay. How are the plans, Ms. Better Barraza? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. George Wynn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office held an abutters meeting for this project on July 5th, and there were no concerns from the community. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review. I'll okay. second that motion. Okay, Fortune? Aye. Beta Barraza? Aye. Raujo also aye. So the motion for approval with design review carries. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Calling the next case, calling DOA 134 1482 74 Baker Street. This is an attached two car garage with playroom and bathroom above the garage. The violation of Article 56, Section 8, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Wait a minute. Hi, this is Eileen Melville at 74 Baker Street. Can you hear me? Yes, please tell us what you're proposing to do. Okay, I'm a proposing for a two-car garage with a loft above it, playroom, bathroom, and um, it'll be in the rear, um, the rear part of the property, and it has a insufficiency of the. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's let's let's. Uh, we just need to understand a little bit more clearly what you're proposing to do. Oh. So I see. So I see your um, your house. I see the proposed garage. Yes. And uh, explain. I, I, I think I don't clearly understand if you're proposing to attach the garage to the house or you're proposing these uses inside the garage. I'm opposing. I, I'm going to, um, well, we want to um, attach the garage to the house. It'll be attached for all, right, right down on that. You can see it on the, the drawing on the right side there where the okay. electrical and everything will be attached to the home right by that bathroom on, on the first floor. In the porch. Okay, so um, so that's the proposed garage plan. So you're going to put a bathroom. Okay, no, got no, it. The, no, the bathroom's already there. It's it's just. Oh, I see. Yes, inside. Oh, so it's, so it's that little, and there's a little breezeway, and yes. um, you're not proposing because I see a a, a a toilet there. You're not propose proposing any occupancy in that garage, are you? No, we're not. That that's just basically storage in a arts and crafts area for me. So okay. we, we need the storage. And the other thing is, is we have a trailer outside with a car in it. And uh -huh. we'd like to put that inside the garage with, with my car. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. And, and then I got um I had five letters sent in there. Yeah, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, please. Uh how are the plans, Miss Better Barraza? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any uh Anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition to this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Jake Lacey from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant went in front of the West Roxbury Neighborhood Council on June 21st, and the zoning committee voted 7-0 in support of the project. We have not received any letters of opposition, and at this time, we defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. 
Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have one letter of support and the uh, West Roxbury uh, neighborhood support. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'm going to make a motion which is similar to the BPDA recommendation. And that motion is to approve the project with BPDA design review, but to turn the full bathroom into a half bath with no shower. Okay. okay. Um, to half bath. Okay. And you are in support to um, Mr. I'll, su I'll support that as well. Okay. So just for the checkoff list here, Fortune? Aye. Meta Barraza? Aye. Araujo also aye for motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, calling BOA 134 3301 for Delano Park. This is to renovate the existing third floor bedroom, extend header height over the existing stairs and head under an A frame, and add a bathroom and laundry to the third floor. Violation Article 67, Section 9, the floor to air ratio is excessive. In Article 67, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Wellington to be on. Oh, Wellington Rossi, can you hear us? Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. He's on as a panelist. I'm not sure what's going on with his connect call. I don't think he, he can. He can mute it. He's still on. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So first, okay. before you go I'm into, sorry. I'm yeah, so first sorry. Put, your, put your name and address on the record. Tell us if this is a one family or a two family, and if it's owner occupied. Okay. Uh, my name is Wellington Rossi. Uh, the Ford Delano Park is a two family. It's a two family, and yeah, it's, it's owner it's occupied or not? It's two owners. Yes. It's, okay. It's, got it. Good. Okay. So please tell us what's being proposed. Uh, what is proposed was that if you're still on the design there, it was just an A-frame that was existing already, a little A-frame on, on a, you can see the dark lines, and mm -hmm. a little a little dormer to raise the stairs so the head of height was, um, you know, too cold and comfortable to walking up to the third floor that was existing there. And the just, just to uh, clarify, the bathroom and the laundry is under to the right side of the existing A-frame, so that was um just inside of the existing area too so actually we okay. just uh, increased the square footage by 86 square feet that's all it was so all together all this all this addition is 86 square feet it, that would be correct yes okay okay how are the plans miss better barraza the plans are adequate madam chair is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition to this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office like to defer judgment to the board. Some background information on the community process. Our office held an abutters meeting on July 13th. Uh, no abutters were in attendance and subsequently no one reached out to our office. Uh, if we understand the applicant also did reach out to the Longfellow Area Neighborhood Association. Uh, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. And no long Longfellow does not is nowhere near Delano Park. It's, oh, I'm not sure, ma'am. I just, yep, it's, just, it's, the, it's the other side of Rosie. This is just okay. the notes I have from our Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so um, may I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review, paying special attention to the design of the dormer. I'll second that motion. Okay. Um fortune. Aye. Better Barraza. Aye. Araujo also in support. So motion for approval with design review carries. Good luck. Calling the next case, calling BOA 135 0693 16 Meredith Street. This is the extension of living space into the attic, the new third floor bedroom and bathroom. The violation is Article 56, Section 8. The floor DA ratio is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Margaret Darbaloff. Our address is 16 Meredith Street in West Roxbury. It's a one, one family and it's owner occupied. Oh, thanks for being so succinct. So tell us what you're proposing to do. We would like to uh, finish our third floor uh, to make, turn it into a bedroom with a full bath and, um, and that would include a dormer. That would include a dormer. And how many square feet is this total? There is there is no addition to the 
Um, there's no extrusions on the on the property. You will okay. not add any square footage. It changes the far because of the five foot, you know, wall that has to be uh, done. Um, okay. Okay. And okay. How are the plants, Ms. Beta Barraza? Madam Chair, the plants are adequate. Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jake Lacey from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant, uh, we as Office of Neighborhood Services hosted a meeting with the applicant on July 14th, where the rear abutters um, voiced their support. Um, and then the applicant also went in front of the West Roxbury Neighborhood Council on July 25th, where they received a vote in support of seven to zero. Finally, we received uh, six letters of support from abutters on the front and the sides of the properties as well. We have not received any letters of opposition, and at this time, we defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we, have, do we, we do have four letters of support. Thank you. Um, may I have a um, um, Miss, uh, Miss Ambassador? Madam Chair, I have no raised hands, thank you. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review on next year. Second that motion. Fortune? Aye. Beta Barraza? Aye. Araujo, also aye, so motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling VOA 135 1812 to Amelia Terrace. This is adding an addition to the top of the building for a second floor addition and attic space, storage space to the existing dwelling. The violation of Article 56, Section 8, front yard is insufficient, and Article 56, Section 8, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Hello, my name is Lauren Tremble. I'm here with my husband, David. We reside at 2 Amelia Terrace. It's a owner occupied single family home. Okay, tell us what you're proposing to do. Our goal is to add a second story onto our single story home. It does okay. not change the footprint of the house. Okay, and your all these violations are existing violations? Yes, they're and, all pre-existing. And what's the um, total square foot addition that you're proposing? Currently right now, our house is a thousand square feet and we're adding a thousand square feet on top of the, the first floor. Okay, how are the plants, Ms. Better Barraza? Madam Chair, the plants are adequate. Is anybody here? Um, um, is anybody here? Can you can you scroll down just a little bit so we can have a look at the plants? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jake Lacey from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant went in front of the West Roxbury Neighborhood Council on June 21st, where they received a vote of support five to zero. We haven't received any letters of opposition. At this time, we defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have two support letters. Madam Chair. Ms. Ambassador, uh, anybody else? No, Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA Design Review. I'll second that motion. Fortune? Aye. Beta Barraza? Aye. Araujo is also aye, so motion for approval with Design Review carries. Good luck. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling DOA 135 9680 25 Farmington Road. This would construct a rare three-story addition to an existing dwelling, including a complete interior remodel, extension of living space to the lowest level, and a new rear deck and an attached shed. The violation of Article 10, Section 1, limitation of parking area, Article 56, Section 8, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 56, Section 40, the application of dimensional regulation, the side yard of certain narrow lots, 10 feet wide driveways are required. Article 56, Section 40.1, conforming with existing building alignment. Article 56, Section 8, the building height is excessive in stories. And Article 56, Section 8, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Ivan Hernandez, 111 Baker Street, uh, on behalf of the homeowners. As uh, stated, we're proposing a uh, three-story rear addition to so the existing- let me, let me just ask you a couple questions. Is this a single or a two-family, and is it owner-occupied? A single 
and owner occupied, yes. Okay, uh, so please go ahead then and tell us what, what's being proposed. Uh, the proposal is for an addition in the back of the house, uh, three stories. Uh, we're gonna be um, adding a open family room area on the first floor, extending the kitchen family living area on the first floor, and then uh, creating um, additional uh, bedroom on the second floor, master bedroom suite. Um, on the uh, in the basement area, part of the uh, new basement area or the new basement area will be finished off and then uh, part of the existing basement area would also be finished off um there is a okay so a couple questions what's the occupancy of the basement proposed to be uh it's going to be for recreational space for the home and there's going to be uh, some mechanical area down there but uh, mainly recreational space it's a okay, walk out and um Okay, and uh, let's ask, and what what about the attic? Uh, the attic would be, for the most part, unfinished. It's just going to be a, a laundry a room, a laundry space created up in the attic because uh, there was no space on the second floor to fit it. Okay, and then talk to us about the new rear deck and the attached shed. Yeah, the uh, the rear deck is uh, a four foot. A deep uh, deck along the back of the house, and then there'll be a, a little a bit of a, a rectangle uh, deck area to the left. The reason that is is that um, uh, we had been asked to try to keep the uh, setback uh, alignment of the building in the back uh, because of the parkway, the VFW parkway, and so we um, adjusted, modified the drawings to accommodate the uh, the wishes of the uh, public works department. Okay. Um, then, okay. Okay, got it. How are the plans, Ms. Beta Barraza? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jake Lacey from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office hosted a community meeting on May 10th with minimal community interest for this meeting and then the applicant also went in front of the West Roxbury Neighborhood Council on June 21st where they received a vote of 6-0 in support. Our office also received three letters of support from the community with no letters of opposition. At this time we defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Yeah Madam Chair we have those letters in mayor's office logo. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion with two proviso that it will be reviewed by the BPDA and also um, by the Department of Parks and Recreation, given that its location is within the Green Belt Protection Overlay District. I'll second that motion. Okay, Fortune? Aye. Better Barraza? Aye. Around Joe also in support, so motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Calling the next case will be discussion. Calling case BOA 133 6189 2005 Dorchester Avenue. This is to extend the driveway to park vehicles on the side of the house. The violations Article 65, Section 41, Austria parking requirements, and Article 65, Section 9, residential re dimensional regulations, insufficient usable open space. Name and address for the record, please. Francine Times, 2005 Dorchester Ave. Okay, Ms. Times, uh, tell us why you were deferred before or did you request the deferral? Uh, no, they wanted measurements. That's why um, I'm having a second meeting. The first time I just presented the plot plan for the, um, for the area, but I presented pictures and measurements so okay. you can see where I'm gonna be parking my cars because I'm gonna have a section of the house or a section of the property uh, asphalted so I could, um, number one, uh, prevent water from going into my property and uh, number two, easy access for me, maintenance free as I get older. Madam Chair, um, Mr. D'Amico has spoke on this. I don't know if you've seen his comments. I have not. Okay, Mr. And regarding 2005 Dorchester Avenue, Ward 17, the plans are very poor and show one vehicle would be parked in the front yard. Okay, so let's look at the revised drawings and see if that clarifies anything. 
Okay, so um, so let's just see. So we have the uh, can uh, oh, there's uh, another set of drawings. Yeah, it's not this. I think this one is with photos. There's another second set of drawings. It's two. It's um. Like almost like two plot plans. Mr. D'Amico's comments for from August 12th. Okay, thank you. In the meantime, while we're waiting for this to load, is there anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, George Schwinn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office hosted in a butters meeting for the proposal on May 15th. We heard no concerns from the community. At this time, our office will defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other raised hands, Ms. Ambassador? Much, I have no raised hands. Okay, so let's look at the plans and see what we have before us. Yeah, in regards to my comment, um, what I found very confusing was to understand uh, a clear survey drawing of what's existing and then what's being proposed or what's being requested for variance. Okay, um, so these are, let me just ask Ms. Times, this is the re revised drawing that we have in front of us? Well, that's the drawing that you had from, from, an, from, a, um, from a job that I was gonna do, but I had that abandoned. Okay. And then where I, and then where I have the pink um, shading is what I submitted before, just to kind of show where my parking, my extended parking is gonna be, because I'm not, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so, and then where are, the, where are the dimensions that you said you had? I added? put them on the pictures. I submitted oh, the pictures so you can see it on the pictures. Okay, I see, I get it. So, um, and what size? So, so, so let me just ask, do you already have a curb cut? Yes, I, I, yes, I already have a curb cut, so I don't need one. So what's the, what's the length of that curb cut? Uh, well, I wrote everything on the picture so you can see it. I, I okay, can't remember. So, okay, so please, uh, can we go back to the photographs to see if they're um, an annotated in any way? Madam Chair, I... I would like to, is it possible to make a recommendation? I do think we should just um, give the applicant a chance to talk through okay. uh, her proposal um, because then we can um, make recommendations based on that. I'm hoping that Tuesday's meeting, because I noticed that the, that the city's um, internet was very slow or loading this morning. Um, so I'm hoping Tuesday we'll have, um, you know, everything will be good. Okay, okay, perfect. So you have a 14 foot curb cut existing. Yeah, and in the pictures are my two cars. I had to park them in the street because there was a dumpster in my um, driveway only because um, I was doing the inside of my house over. Okay. So, but I submitted all the pictures so you can see everything. And then I wrote everything down to kind of cor cor correspond the pictures. So just for clarification, this is, so just for clarification, this is existing. That's an existing and, curb right, cut right now. Yeah. Right. And it, okay. okay, so basically how many cars do you, proposing to park um, in two. two cars? Yeah, the one the one that's near the curb is mine and the one across the street is mine. Okay, do you have a photo uh, from the curb cut to the house? Uh, I put all I the think pictures. it's to the back oh, of the garage. Okay, 
Right. So this is where I was going to comment that it seems like it's already the work has been already done. There's a uh, you know gravel. Nothing was driveway, done. Driveway an Nothing asphalt driveway. Done. So it seems like so. What are we extending? So so I'm basically, sorry. you're coming in to legalize something that was already there. No, no. What I want is to extend it on the on the right side of the house where the sunroom is. If you if you continue to scroll down, I just simply want to kind of illustrate everything for you. This is where oh, I want to park my cars. Okay, I see. I see. So, so then it would basically almost be front yard parking. Well, now that's the side of the house. No, that's not a front yard. Yeah, yeah, that's side yard parking. That's the side of the house. That, that's the back of the house. That's the side back. So um, my question to you then is, if you park like this, how will you exit you will you will have to do a, a back out into the street in addition to making the turn versus a straight back out. No, no. I mean, I mean, with one car, you know, with one car in a driveway, if I if I back into the into that space, um, it's not going to interfere with anything. I mean, because my driveway in front of the garage is already there. I just want to extend it off to the side because simply simply it's going to be easier for me in the winter time because right now the cars are in front of one another and it's difficult in the winter time for me to try to you know you know drive a vehicle if I want to drive one this way if one is parked off to the side um then at least I can um I can exit one without a problem and if I want to drive another car just move that one out it's not going to be in the way of anything because I had Okay, so let me just ask you clearly. So your your goal is to have one car park in the existing driveway and yeah. one, one and room in the side yard for an additional car. Right. Okay, so you basically want to park them like a T or an L. Yes. Or something like yes. That. Okay. Yes. So given that, um, my question uh, is whether you need to have. Um, this much space dug up for your parking. I would like that much space only because that's what I want. Okay, because we have to balance that against how it's uh, going to affect the neighborhood. Okay, the neighborhood, so, all no, my no, neighborhood I, is in is support of it. No, I got it. I got it. But we have to take a step back and look at what it means, uh, you know, from a great from a bigger perspective. Um, so, um, any so given this information, uh, and we've heard from, uh, and, and so let's have everybody um, muted. Um, what did the BPDA recommend on this? The BPDA recommended a, a deferral. Um, the plans submitted to BPDA in 2019 do not show layout and dimensions of a new parking space. My recommendation was to have a deferral and to actually have an accurate survey plot plan of what the applicant is proposing. So and then, then they come to the floor. Madam, and Madam Chair, that this was uh, back on July 14. So the BPDA didn't see this after it was deferred. Yeah. So and they wouldn't see any right. plans. And and Bob's recommendation is from August, did you say? That's correct, August 12th. Because I'm wondering if uh, we can do a, a approval with proviso limiting the uh, the space in that L that we have in the building in front of us to exactly the size of a parking spot. Do you think that will work, Ms. Better Barraza? Um, I... I don't find the typology very similar to the side street, so mm -hmm. I'm not in. I'm not in favor. And Madam Chair, Mr. D'Amico does say it's front yard parking. Yeah, I, 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 I yeah. Okay, so it's Even a corner it's lot. Yard, I so, get that. Yeah, yeah. So it's not side yard parking. How can we get a resolution to this? Um, Trying to be see if we can uh, come up with anything that will um, meet the residents' needs, but also not eat too much into into the yard. 
Madam Chair, I would make a suggestion that we maybe put this in front of the full board because if we do do something here, then someone else will want to do the same thing. And I think yeah, that's got it. Yeah, okay. that's that's smart. So may I have that motion? I'll make that motion for deferral to the full board. Okay, Ms. Betterbaraza. I, I like to. I like right. to second that, but encourage okay. the applicant when they come to the full board to have an accurate survey plot plan. Um, okay, uh, Fortune? Aye. Better Barraza? Aye. Araujo also in support. Can you give us a date, please, Mr. Fortune? Well, Madam Chair, I think it's all going to hinge upon what Ms. Barraza just said. Can they get an accurate plot plan that we could actually all take a look at? Because we could put it on for Tuesday. But I don't know how accurate to be no, able to get that. Yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't have that. Okay. They're gonna add the same question. Yeah, all right. So let's do so the same questions. We can do um I think we need to push this out till October. Okay. Ten. We, one other one other recommendation is to have the applicant just kind of to have an informal conversation with BTD. Yeah. Okay. So we can do okay. October first at eleven thirty. Okay, so I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, October 4th. Okay, so Miss Times, <clears throat> we will see you on October 4th at 1130. Do I have to come up? Do I have to come up with new a, a new plot plan? I mean, I have a plot plan that I no, paid so, for already. So, hold on, hold on. So this is what we're trying to talk to you because we're trying to see how to make this work. Um, so we recommend one that you talk to the Boston Transportation Department, very specifically to Mr. Bob D'Amico um, and talk through this proposal with him. That's one thing. And the second thing is um, <coughs> that you know, we know that you've measured this out, but if you could have somebody do it as an official plot, uh, as an official plan, that would be very helpful to us. Yeah, but that's gonna cost me too much money to do a survey. Okay, so um, make sure that you talk to Mr. Mr. D'Amico and we are recommending that you get a survey. It's up to you, but we will see you regardless on October 4th at 1130, okay? Thank yeah. you. See you then. Calling the next case, calling DOA 134, 3120, 330 K Street. This is bullshit. Hi, um, I'm Taryn Ho. Hold on, hold on two sorry. seconds, ma'am. Hold on. It, this is to extend the driveway to park vehicles on. I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Hold on. This is to add a roof deck with head house. The violations, Article 68, Section 29, roof structure restrictions, and Article 68, Section 8. The billing height is excessive in feet. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Taryn Bone, and I'm the architect representing my client at 330 K Street, Unit 2. And is it a one or a two family? It's a two family and it's owner occupied. Okay, so tell us what's being proposed first and tell us why you've been deferred. Sure, um, so we're proposing a roof deck. What you see there is, is uh, was to kind of show the abutters where we're located um, and not our roof deck proposal. So if you continue on in the plans, um, you'll see, you'll get to the roof deck proposal, but um, we deferred for a butter outreach. Okay, and so let, tell us what page we need to get to to see the, the deck, is this it? Yes, this is the deck. So this would be from behind. So you're kind of in the alley between um, the property behind K Street. And it, it, we, we wanted to tuck it, uh, tuck it back and tuck it away from the street. So it's actually not visible from the street at all, unlike the, the two on either okay. side. So tell us, what is this uh, uh, white box that we are seeing? What is, that is the head house? If you go to the next image, it's much clearer. Um, so that's the head house coming up from the top floor to the, the roof deck. And have you explored hatch alternatives? Because this board generally is not an approval of head houses, much more uh, friendlier to hatches. We, um, I, I was on the last meeting and did hear that. Um, we did not change the design. We, you know, the two on either side both have head houses. If you do go to the very first images, you'll see. You no, know, so the thing is we can't gauge by what's happening around you because we don't know how many of those are legal or not. Um, so the projects that we look at, we need to be very precise about um, a, a message to you as a, to you on behalf of the applicant. Sure. Um, I mean, we 
would prefer to have a head house, but obviously if you're, um, you know, if you make us do something. Right, got it. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, um, is, um, how are the plants, Ms. Barraza? Madam Chair, the plants are adequate. Uh, is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office held in the Butters meeting on June 2nd, where it was attended by a number of abutters. There was a lot of concerns raised in opposition from neighbors um, due to the concerns with noise that exists in the neighborhood, as well as parties that have already occurred at that property. Uh, also, neighbors asserted that the owner does not occupy that, that space. It's not owner-occupied. Um, the Gate of Heaven Neighborhood Association opposed the project as well. Uh, we received five letters of opposition regarding the proposal. With that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, we have those letters the mayor's office spoke of. Madam Chair, I have two raised hands here. I'll start with Anna. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, Madam Alicia, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The councilor would like to go on record in opposition to this proposal. Rooftech has been a long source of loud, loud noise at all hours, disturbance and trash removal issues for several years in the area. Neighbors have expressed opposition to the proposed roof deck and indicated that granting approval for another roof deck in the neighborhood will negatively impact the quality of life. Thank you. And Christine, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my name is Christine Donnellan. I'm um, I live at 347 K Street, but diagonal away from 330K. I was in the Butters meeting on June 2nd, also, and I am for opposite uh, opposing the people that live that own it do not live there. So I'm not sure what Taryn Bone is saying that it's uh, owner occupied. A father bought it for his young son that's in their 20s. And the police have been called multiple times for parties and noise violations. So I believe having uh, giving them a roof deck would uh, violate any of the families that live around there. We have a ton of young families and children and um, they're very noisy. So I don't think that they need a roof deck to have outdoor parties in. Yeah, interesting. Thank you. Sorry, Ms. No. 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 Ambassador. Okay. So, given that information, um, may I have a motion? Can I jump in quickly? This is David Linhart, also with the, the project team with Coulson. Would it be possible to jump in? Um, David, you know, we were relying on Taryn, Taryn Bone to give the presentation. Um, so, um, give us some, put your name and address on the record and give us a quick qualification on this. Yes, uh, David Linhart of Goulston stores at 400 Atlantic. And uh, just a couple of things to mention that it, it is, uh, it's owned, family owned, and there are two members of the family in, in the unit. Uh, and the, the family that owns it is open to addressing noise concerns with provisos as to quiet hours. Um, you know, David, um, um, Thank you for that. However, it just sounds like um, there has been continuous problems that in fact, there should not be a need to put in quiet hours in a residential neighborhood. It's that you kind of, you know, have your ears and eyes open to know what's happening around you and to understand if there are young families or not. So um, I thank you for trying uh, but in the meantime, let's um, mute everybody and go to a motion. Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of denial without prejudice. And I'm going to second that motion. Fortune? Aye. Better Barraza? Aye. Araujo also aye. So the motion carries. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'm going to go back to a case we called earlier on 10 Carson. I'm going to call it back into the record, calling DOA 126 515210 Carson Street. This was an asphalt paved driveway with three parked three vehicles. Paved the, the driveway at the front of the house. Let the house, let the outside car move easier. This paved driveway is not for parking purposes. Violations Article 65, Section 41, off street parking and loading, and Article 65, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please.
Is she still on? Um, one second. Uh, unmute. You can unmute yourself. Get your hand up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Can we make sure that we have the correct drawings? If you could pull pull them up, please. Whoever's manning the screen. So may I um, share my screen now? Or? No, I'm talking to the staff from ISD to see if they found the revised yeah. plans. Okay. Yeah. I did look into the system. There, are, there is a different set of drawings that show three parking spaces, um, but I don't know if that was actually reviewed by ISD. Uh, this, the set of drawings that they reviewed and stamped for the board uh, just have the one parking space. Um, okay, um, so I'm sorry, ma'am. Ma um, let's. Uh, we have you on the record. Um, may we have a deferral to the next meeting so that we do everything correctly? Um, we don't. We don't want to approve you, ma'am, and then have you come back because there's an issue that we did not see, okay? So we'd rather just clear this up. I'm so, gonna make a motion for deferral for the 9-15, uh, September 15th meeting at 5 p.m. So I nine, second. Not, I too am in support. So um, it's uh, Fortune. Aye. Meta Barraza. Aye. Araujo, aye. Um, so we'll, we will see you on September 15th um, at five o'clock, okay? Yeah, and we'll you. make sure that everything's been reviewed in the meantime. Thank you, everybody. The meeting is now adjourned. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. I'm off.